Good morning, prayer warriors. Hey, just a great day here, uh, just in God's kingdom, just uh, to be able to pray and just give thanks every day. And let's just do that real quick, can't we? Dear Lord, I just praise your name. We give thanks for all you do for us. Whether it's good or bad or indifferent, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, um, go ahead and open up your Bible, um, or if you've got a Bible app, open it up to one of those just amazing verses, Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Um, and really, it's Paul writing to the, the, the church there in Philippi, and he writes, Be anxious for nothing, but it everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. And I want to talk to you about uh, today about this young man, Horatio. And I'm not sure I would ever name a kid Horatio, but back in, uh, you know, 1823, um, early 1800s, that was, that was a fairly popular name. Um, and, and anyway, Horatio, born into a good family, went to law school, um, just really was doing well. He was really blessed, um, raised in a Christian environment. In fact, when he went to Chicago and opened up his real estate business there, um, he became good friends with D.L. Moody. And we talked about D.L. Moody and him being an evangelist last week, and uh, they were just dear friends. And their families vacationed together, and they saw each other very frequently. And in fact, um, um, he was he was doing so amazingly well. He had a whole lot of real estate holdings there in Chicago. But what happened in 1871? Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicked over the lantern, burnt down Chicago, and, and in fact burnt down all of his real estate holdings. And he really, really struggled. Meanwhile, D.L. Moody is in England um, there in 1872, and they're you know, doing great. And the family, Horatio's family, you know, every year would go to Europe and go to England. And they said, hey, well, this year we'll go see our good friend, you know, Dwight Moody. Well, Horatio couldn't go because he was still fussing with the city because of, of, of a lot of different rules and regulations. So Anna and his four daughters took off on a ship. A couple of days later, that ship was hit by another ship in the North Atlantic in November and uh, sank. And those four little girls between the ages of 12 and 18 months died. Anna was the only one in that family who was rescued by a boat. They took her to Cardiff, Wales, and she sent Horatio, her husband, a, a text, or I'm sorry, a telegram. It says, saved alone. Well, so he immediately got on a ship and, and sailed over there to take care of his wife. And they did happen to have, you know, after they got back to the United States, they did have three other children. Um, but at the age of three, Horatio Jr., the oldest of those three newborns, died. And so, I mean, just between the Chicago fire, the loss of their first four children, the young girls, and, and Horatio, um, you know, the dad was just, he was stricken with grief. The mom was stricken of grief. And they started a small church there in Chicago, and they all had on their hearts to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so Horatio, his family, they all up and went to Jerusalem. And they opened up a, a uh, I would call it a nonprofit, but they all opened up a soup kitchen. Um, and they reached out to all of the homeless there in, in Jerusalem. And they all opened up their hearts to the Christians, the Muslims, the Jews. And it was non-denominational, and they just loved on these people, especially the orphans. And in fact, in, during this time frame, uh, they adopted a young Turkish boy as a teenager. His name's Jacob. Um, and they faithfully served in that mission field until Horatio died, um, about on his 60th birthday. But he left behind a legacy after he was buried there in the Mount Zion Cemetery there in Jerusalem. Um, number one, uh, these three things he left behind. Number one, his son Jacob. He grew up to be a world-renowned 
archaeologist. He spoke five languages, and there in Hezekiah's tunnel, that if you take a look at Second Chronicles and Second Kings, it describes the Assyrians surrounded the city of David and Hezekiah. They knew they were going to lose the battle because they didn't have water, and they built this tunnel down to Siloam's pool. And then Jacob, that young man, He was helping with that excavation. He was the one who found the Siloam inscription, and that described the building of this long tunnel down to the Siloam's pool at the very bottom. And so that was the first thing, adopting this young Turkish kid, an orphan, and, and, you know, turned around, and he went on to do some amazing things. The second thing was, you know, even after... He passed away in the late 1800s, even during World War I. That mission continued. And, and uh, even during the Armenian and Assyrian genocides, they call it the American colony. And they fed thousands of Muslim, Jewish, and Christian communities. Um, and they had soup kitchens, they had hospitals, and they set up orphanages. <clears throat> The third thing, though, besides Jacob and their son Jacob and and the American colony feeding others, was back, let's go back to 1872, when this grief-stricken dad is on his way to pick up his wife. He is sailing past where his daughters perished. And I want to share some words that he wrote. Horatio Gates Spafford wrote these words as he passed the watery grave as his daughters. His daughters, Annie, age 12, Maggie, age 7, Bessie, age 4, and their 18-month-old baby. He wrote these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows rolls, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, through trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, O the blessed Bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the, praise the Lord, O my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. So here is one of those famous heartfelt songs that were written in just a time of trouble, a horrible loss, and he never lost his faith. In fact, he sought that peace from God that it says, just as we see in Philippians 4, it's that peace of God in all prayer and supplication. Many of us would have quit. Many of us would have turned our backs on God, but Horatio grew closer to God with his family, his mission, and his heart. Lord, we just give thanks this day. And for all of you, it is well with my soul. Thank you. 